Hi, my name is Carrie Edwards and I come to you on behalf of the Association of Vapors India. On the 18th of September 2019, the government of India banned vaping. Now, we've been fighting this ban ever since on every conceivable front, but we need your help. Please get on Twitter and tweet at the relevant ministers or other government officials about the benefits of vaping. Spreading awareness about tobacco harm reduction is of paramount importance and busting the myths surrounding vaping is now a matter of public health. As part of our fight against the ban, we will be hosting a series of documentaries through which vapors will get more relevant information. Smokers will get more awareness about the harm reduction alternatives and people in general will have a better understanding of what vaping really is. These documentaries will be featured every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time on what we like to call Vaping Thursday. The documentaries will stay up until midnight and longer if we're able to secure the copyrights. Now, we will also make sure that the sources are tagged so that you can watch them at their original location. These documentaries are made by great filmmakers with awesome production value. And most importantly, these documentaries feature experts in the fields of vaping research, medicine, and other relevant fields. So please encourage your friends and family to watch with you because you never know when this information could help save a life. Welcome to Vaping Thursday. Dimitri and I have taken you all over the world with vaping. We've taken you to international shows. We've shown you the inside of Chinese manufacturing. We've shown you e-liquid production and even board manufacturing. But the one thing we haven't shown you is how you go from this to this. And today that changes here at VDLV. Hi, I'm Charlie Perrault. I'm the co-founder of VDLV and NG Science Company with Vincent, my associate. Um, we created this uh, group uh, in uh, 2012 uh, after uh, one or two years of research. We created this company, we produce some liquids with natural flavor, Vincent Vapes flavor. With um, our company, we work to produce for the French market. In 2017, uh, with the local institution, uh, we uh, start uh, the production of nicotine. Um, it is a, a new green chemistry program for the perfect uh, nicotine production uh, without uh, toxic solvents. And we success and uh, we produce the first liquids with uh, this nicotine. So th this is really step one. Th these boxes come in and these boxes are full of, of yes, tobacco. Yes, local right? tobacco leaves. Okay, so all of this, this is all grown locally, right? This is all French tobacco. Yes, it's um, 
um, local pa um, local uh, partnership with uh, with the farmers who produce tobacco, uh, and this tobacco is only produced for us because it's not the same tobacco than uh, cigarettes. is a little bit different because we need the more uh, nicotine concentration inside. Right. So this is a very very high nicotine concentration. Yes, this is it. This is step one. Let's go find step, step two. one. Let's go see yes, step, step two. two. All right. So here we are at step two. We already saw the whole leaf. Where does the whole leaf go where does it go um, this is a grinder and uh, we we have to to make the, the leaf uh, uh, into strips uh, for uh, the next operation extraction now when I see these guys right here you, you might think breaking bad you might think breaking bad or or you might think Dimitri has very bad gas but no uh, there's something else going on here. The ground up tobacco actually starts here over at the, it's like a screw conveyor belt. The screw conveyor belt goes up and it goes into one of these large vessels here. And this is actually where, where the extraction takes place. So in this, uh, in this third uh, step, we humidify the tobacco with uh, a basis solution uh, who uh, allows uh, the pH modification and this pH modification uh, allows the um, nicotine free operation. Okay. So uh, when the nicotine is free, we can cross this tobacco leaf with steam. The steam cross this tobacco leaf and uh, uh, remove the nicotine. And we, after this operation, we produce a water with nicotine. Okay, so here, you're actually adding, you're changing the pH of the tobacco. Yes. Or, and you're, you're adding a water, and you're also adding humidity. Yes. Okay, and then eventually, once you have it extracted, you steam it, and it's the steam that yes. actually contains exactly. the, 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 the nicotine. We produce a steam with nicotine, and after, it's the step four. Okay, so here, the nicotine extraction is complete, it's finished. Yes. And we have the, the, the used tobacco leaf coming out. Now, this is one thing that is very, very serious for you because this, nothing goes to waste. No. So this does not go to waste. You use this to create energy. Yes. Actually, we work with a partner just uh, near these units and they uh, extract the energy inside this tobacco because tobacco is smoking very easy, of course. Right. Uh, and uh, we want to produce in the future our bioenergy with that and it's possible we are working on that actually okay so i mean this company really does care about the environment uh, the, you have a basically you've created a new nicotine extraction process that is a cleaner process than what's being done elsewhere and you try to reuse every bit of of, of waste yes to create energy exactly right? it's uh, green chemistry for us and green chemistry is the best energy, the best solvent we can use, uh, everything has to be reflected with, um, uh, we push the reflection uh, if uh, there is uh, impact or not for uh, environment. Okay. So here the vapors are coming in. Exactly. All right, and we have to condense it down in, back into a liquid. Yes. Right, and that happens in here? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the, we just uh, modified the temperature, of course, and after the, the steam with nicotine uh, uh, is transformed to uh, water with nicotine. It's very simple, uh, no, no science, uh, very complex science inside. It's very easy to produce, but after we have to use a um, gravity filter for extracting the flavors, uh, some impurity, and um, the goal of, the, the, of this operation is to qualify the water with nicotine and uh, after we calculate the volume okay. before the next operation. So the result of everything that just happened in the, the other room is this liquid right here. Yes. Uh, and the condensation is this liquid. And this liquid is only 1% nicotine at this point. Yes, between 1% and 2%. Okay. And the hard work is after. Okay. Right, you said this is the easy part. Yes, it's now very we're gonna easy. Get, now but we're going to get to the hard part. Yes. And nope. it's the, the hard part that is going to get us from 1% to 100% or as close as possible. Yes, it's more difficult. And our... Um, goal it's to produce this pure nicotine only with green chemistry and don't use um, toxic solvents okay. this is a, 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 a very nice project for, for us it was a very nice project right. and we success right and that, that that's that's where your patents are the, the fact that you're creating this without using corrosive chemicals but it's a green process yes and uh, of course the yield is not perfect right. but the intention is really correct okay well let's go see the hard part let's go
So what you see here is uh, my new coffee maker. Uh, it's uh, it makes a delicious cappuccino, espresso, cafe long, um, and and a lovely latte. All right, so obviously not a coffee maker. All right, not a coffee maker. But I mean, this is really where the magic happens. This is where we go from the one percent liquid to something that we can actually use in an electronic cigarette product. Yes, we are in this step. We are another sub step of course but this one is very important um, it's um, probably the start of our uh, patent or or uh, expertise sure sure uh, this is our uh, resin colognes and the water with nicotine cross this resins and the nicotine can be catched by this resin for a few moments and um, we just uh, um, adjust this time and uh, at the end of the operation, we can uh, cross this uh, resin with another acid um, solution. And this acid solution can catch and, uh, um, again this nicotine, but for uh, chemical combination. Okay. And this chemical combination is um, um, like a salt of nicotine. Okay. But this salt of nicotine is a little bit different than the nicotine salt we, we, we know in the vaping industry. It's not okay. exactly the same. So the nicotine water comes in here, yes. um, and, and you have a resin in here that grabs the nicotine, but it only grabs it for a certain amount of time. Yes, exactly. And then when, once it has it, you use an acid to, I guess, rinse? Yes. Okay, and then we go to the next step. So again, I mean, this is your own process, right? And, and it took a lot of trial and error to get this right? Yes. Okay. Um, we, for, just for this operation, uh, we spend a lot of time to perfectly define the resin, the temperature, the pressure, and uh, yes, it, it, it was a very long job for right. that. And you, you've always been concerned about the green aspect of this, Of course, right? yes. And what's the benefit of the green aspect? Just the benefit is the, uh, the first goal was uh, don't use dichloromethane. Actually, the dichloromethane is the solvent used in the nicotine uh, production, and it's very easy to produce nicotine with this product. But for the air, for for the sea, for the earth, it's a, a, a really bad gas. Okay, so we have the acid, we have the water, we have the nicotine. We come over here. What happens here? Oh, uh, just for a uh, deconcentration of the water. We want to concentrate uh, the acid uh, with nicotine, and because. Uh, the, the next operation and the, the, it, it, where uh, appear the nicotine, it's here. Okay, so we, we concentrate yes. the, the acid and the nicotine. Yes. Okay, Not so yet. we go in here. What happens in here? Yes, we, we make like a yo-yo on the pH concentration. Okay, we so put, you're putting a base in there, yes. you're changing the pH, but you're actually making the pH like go up and down, like yes. a yo-yo. Okay. Yeah, a yo-yo. And um, it's an exothermic reaction and um, we obtain like um, 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 oil and vinegar mix. It's okay. like that. So we put the results into a decantation uh, system. It's very easy. Only gravity work works in, in, inside. Okay. And we can observe uh, the uh, raw nicotine and the alkaline uh, wastes. The water with uh, alkaline concentration, for us, it's like a waste. And we extract this waste and we stop just near the crown of nicotine. And this raw nicotine can be put inside the next operation. Okay, so here, the output of this is going in here. And basically, it's just a gravity process. Yes. All the waste is just floating down to the bottom. Yes. You get rid of the waste and what's left is ready to go to the next step. Of course. Okay, so now we have this. We've uh, we filtered out the waste and we have this this dirty looking water. <laughs> what, what ha there's a lot of nicotine in there at this point, right? Yes. What happens after this? After this, we put this raw nicotine inside this reactor. Uh, it's like a vacuum, uh, space vacuum system because we, uh, we decrease the pressure to the space environment and we have to adjust pressure, temperature for uh, the nicotine extraction, the nicotine vaporization and condensation. It's the solution for pure nicotine extraction. Okay. So we're creating a vacuum in here. Yes, right, everywhere. Which, we put vacuum everywhere. Okay. So in effect, because you're creating a vacuum, it's almost like you're boiling off all of the impurities. Exactly. Yeah. And some waste are staying inside, and other waste are going to this water extraction. Okay. And uh, 
when there is no drop inside, it's, we know that it's time to just modify the temperature to 140 degrees and at this moment we have the vaporization and liquefaction of the nicotine and we have here pure nicotine between 99.6 and 99.8 percent. So this is the actual product that can be used in making electronic cigarette e-liquid. Exactly. We just uh, broke the vacuum with nitrogen for uh, oxide protection and um, we never touch the nicotine because in our e-liquid produ production um, the cartridge um, is just plugged on our system and never a guy can touch the nicotine. I mean, it's so easy, a caveman can do it. At the end of the operation, we just put the pure nicotine inside this cartridge and we plug this cartridge inside our e-liquid production. Okay, so I think one of the important things to, to point out here too is that at no point does the nicotine liquid come in contact with air? Yeah, never. Right. It's not like you're, oh, you have a, a barrel and you're opening up a faucet and it's pouring in the barrel and then you do it. It's always contained in some kind of a vessel. Yes, with, um, with nitrogen. Nitrogen. Because, uh, Right. So the nitrogen, you got pressure, so you can use the pressure to move the nicotine around. Yes, uh, the nicotine is our um, vector fluid for that. So remember this because we're going to find out where this goes next. All right, so we have the canister. We have the canister of, of nicotine all ready to go. And that canister goes in here? Yes, because we inject our nicotine inside um, a PG concentration with nicotine into the, the black uh, tanks. And uh, we are sure, we verify if we're sure to be at the good concentration. And here again, um, once the nicotine is out of that canister, you're filling that canister with, uh, with air, with nitrogen, with water. You're kind of flushing the canister out. Yes, we, we, we plug all of the, the four bottles, 10 liters by bottles, and uh, we inject nicotine and, and we can push the nicotine inside the tanks and automatically we have a, a cleaning system for uh, neutralization of nicotine with water, um, nitrogen um, drying, etc. Okay, so down here you see where the final product gets mixed with, um, with PG and VG, mm -hmm. okay, and again, the, the nicotine never comes out of that bottle, so it's really never touched by human hands, or, or better yet, it's never seen by the air. It's never in an open air environment. So down here, we start to actually pump the nicotine into the production room. Yes. And we're gonna take a look at the giant vats of PG and VG that you have. Uh, and it all, and really the production room is right underneath where we're talking right now. Mm -hmm. And in the production room, you're making about, you said about a million bottles a month. Exactly. And for that, uh, we can use um, uh, our tobacco and uh, we produce our own nicotine. Uh, it depends on our, uh, our needs and uh, we can accelerate the production if we want uh, and the starting for that is uh, using bugs of tobacco and everything is right. variable. So you're really, I mean, it's, it's really an end-to-end -end production. I mean, it's, it's from the tobacco leaf to a finished product and that's what we said at the beginning of this, this video is that we wanted to show you how we get from the leaf to the e-liquid bottle. Now, one thing I think a, a lot of people will be interested in is we saw the big box of tobacco leaves. Yes. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, you don't squeeze it like a grape to get the nicotine e-liquid out. You saw the process. But how how much how much liquid nicotine at 100% or close to 100% would you get out of a box of that leaf? Uh, in a box, we can produce uh, between two and three liter of nicotine. Uh, it represents. Um, uh, 30,000 e-liquid bottles. 30,000, so one box of leaf gives you about 30,000 bottles of, of exactly. e-liquid. So these are absolutely the largest containers of PG or VG that I've ever seen. Uh, what do these containers hold? What's the capacity? Uh, each uh, container can contain uh, 15,000 liter. 15,000 liters. Liter for, um, four tanks for that, PG and VG. Okay. And uh, we analyze the truck before delivery and the laboratory analyze. And if it's okay, we open the valve and um, full uh, the recipe. 
Okay, and these all get pumped into the e-liquid room yes. via the uh, the pipes that we see here and the pipes up on the ceiling. Yes, we have a network for that and uh, pressure in, inside the pipes and uh, when we need uh, PG, we just open the valve and count the the quantity. Okay, and there's lights on the top of these vessels or the, containers. What do the lights mean? The lights are for communicating visually uh, if um, the tank is okay and if it's full or empty uh, and we have a system for a perfect uh, analysis of um, the volume and the laboratory analyze and, and, and the laboratory analyze. Very impressive facility. Thank yeah, you. We've seen, uh, uh, you know, just the uh, incredible work that you do here. Me and Phil are big proponents of tobacco harm reduction. You take it very, very seriously. You've created a monster, right? <laughs> but everything that you have, we, we have seen over the last decade that your company has done, what are you most proud of? Oh, I'm very proud about the implication of our employees because they understand exactly the possibility and the efficiency of uh, the vaping practices. So they know that every day they, they wake up for go to uh, the job, uh, they say today I have the possibility to save a life, to save three lives, uh, ten lives, etc. So we are very proud about that. Um, it's an economical experience. Uh, we are not businessmen, we are uh, technical and scientists and, and we have to work with the marketing um, the marketing system of course but we are very proud about this um, ecosystem and you know we produce other things uh, with the bio um, bio um, pesticide bio uh, energy etc so it's uh, like a dream for me and for Vincent because when we start this experience we just want to make the experience uh, free and accessible for others and actually we are touching the, 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 the subjects of the future because we have to, to join all of the energy um, for, um, for things that mean a um, better future for uh, smokers of course but for our child. Absolutely. Uh, when we look into the future of the vaping industry, you know, we're, we're, we're constantly under scrutiny from regulators. We're, you know, constant pressure from lawmakers and, and the anti-public health that's, that's, that's fighting vaping. What do you believe in your opinion, and your company's opinion, is how do we move into the next decade of vaping? How do we move into the future and, and continue to offer this product as an alternative to smokers? We have to build... Um a lot of knowledge because it's not easy to understand whether you are a smoker or whether you are an institution. We have to confirm that uh, vaping is, is the, the, the perfect solution with pleasure, with uh, a lot of things. Um, I think regulatory uh, need um, to spend uh, the minimum of time for understand and for that um, we have to discuss together uh, with the institution and we have to, to, um, to cross the minds of all of country and it's, diff it's difficult because in USA the practices are different like, than in Europe and in Germany, in Spain it's not the same practices so uh, we have to communicate and you are, um, I really thank you for, for um, making this message, this message possible because probably um, 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 a deputy uh, a president some, th somewhere can understand what we want to do. We are saving life. Right. Um, and um, the future is okay because we can't stop the progress. Uh, we just have to, uh, to, to, to uh, prepare the way for understanding and I, I'm sure everybody is, is, is working very, uh, um, very hard for that. But I have a message. I, I would like to, 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 to say to other companies or the competitors that they have to invest in science because you can't say it's perfect, it's perfect, it's perfect. So, uh, if you don't verify what you are meaning, what, what you are, um, what you are trying to say. Uh, science is a perfect equation for that. The easier way that science, and what we believe is, the, the easiest way to do that is to collaborate. You know, putting putting your resources together. One thing I noticed here, you kept saying yesterday and today is open source, open source, open source, open source every time. But for that, uh, everybody needs to be curious because uh, in our country, uh, when we when media as uh, speaking about uh, vaping, they never speak about French behavior, uh, French behaviors. They speak about USA problems, concern, etc. So, uh, but. Um, it's very easy uh, to understand what is vape. Vape is just generate 
a vapor for inhalation and if all of these parameters are understand uh, um, everybody knows uh, and everybody um, uh, was uh, will be okay with this position um, uh, I think innovation is probably the key for um, uh, more facility in this uh, in these practices um, I know the, the engagement of all of competitors, but um, actually, medias have to read the paper and not only the title. Yeah. They have to read the end of the article. Uh, I hope the article uh, is uh, 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 with, can write with uh, sincerity. But I think this it's not a dream, it's just reality, and people have to uh, observe what is reality in vaping yeah. practices. Yeah, and I think we have to put our efforts behind it as well too. Me and Phil always say the perfect electronic cigarette has not been invented yet. Because if the perfect electronic cigarette was invented, nobody would be smoking, right? Yes, yes, probably, but um, it's like uh, um, glasses, all the, all the glasses. Yes, right? glasses. Yes, yes uh, it's like glasses on your, on your nose, because if you haven't the perfect glasses, you, you can see everything, yes, yes. and we have to adjust. And yeah. it's, a, uh, it's a very nice industry, because we have consumers okay they are attending a lot of uh, uh, of answer uh, we have the, the vape shops and, and the the dis professional of the distribution and they are be able to explain why exactly uh, the, the the smokers need for stopping va uh, stopping uh, uh, tobacco um, and the, the the producer are really invest for that um, I'm very positive when I, I'm looking far away in the future um, I think we we can stop the the, 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 the tabagism with, with with vaping just we have to to be together yes absolutely absolutely <laughs> a very impressive uh, facility uh, as a consumer as a vapor uh, for the last uh, 10 years to me it's important to know what I inhale into my body and you know when you visit a facility like this and you see you know all the work that goes into it uh, the science that goes into producing the final bottle that I'm going to take from here and I'm going to vape I feel a little bit more confident as a consumer and we need to have that education one of the purposes of shooting this video is to educate more the consumer and ask those questions to your manufacturers as well too so with full confidence Charlie I can tell you me and Phil thank you for the hospitality thank you for the education we learned a lot uh, and, and thank you for at least leading the way in a market that that desperately needs this type of operation to continue to grow so thank you very much thank you very much we are very proud to receive you uh, in our country and thank you for the wine last night excellent choice <laughs> very good very good wine a bordeaux wine bordeaux wine thank you so much thank you yes vaping is um uh, a green practices uh, is better than smoker everybody knows the the, the first conclusion is that uh, vaping uh, is uh, safer than uh, smoking tobacco cigarettes of course I, I would say that it, it does not make sense to stay a smoker once you have the solution of vaping product Charlie Perrault, I'm the co-founder of VDLV and NG Science Company with Vincent, my associate. We installed here actually in this uh, building in uh, 2019 and we changed the name LFL to NG Science because NG Science uh, work a lot of engineering and uh, research and development um, uh, analysis. 
um, it's a new start for us because actually we are really with the space we need and uh, it's better for business, it's better for um, ambition of course. All right, so of course Phil showed you all the production and how we make uh, you know, nicotine out of a tobacco leaf. Uh, we make wonderful flavors, millions of bottles go out, but science, science is very important. Science is something unfortunately this industry does not take as seriously as they do here in VDLV. So here we are in the laboratory area. It's basically broken down into three different sections, correct? Yes, and here we are at the NG Science Laboratory. NG Science is like a sister with, with VDLV, but we invest a, a maximum of energy to produce a scientist uh, reflection and to push innovation and observe um, the impact of the vaping uh, um, practices on, on, on vapors, etc. So here we are uh, inside this laboratory and uh, we have three um, uh, parts of this uh, laboratory the analysis of physical parameter, chemistry parameter, and a biology uh, impact. This is more of the mechanical aspect of vaping. As you can see, they have developed their own machines, their own vapor machines that can extract vapor for emissions. They actually have their own machines to test the mechanical aspect of vaping. Why is that important? Well, you heard, you know, the, the study that was, that was happening in America where they were, you know, using the wrong device at the wrong voltage. It doesn't really reflect how a user uh, uses a vapor product during uh, the day, they can actually replicate here exactly different styles of vaping, draws, wattages. They're never going to have that issue of burnt coils like we're seeing in other studies as well too. So the physical parameters of vaping are just as important as what you're going to get out of the emissions or what you're going to get out of the e-liquid testing, right? Exactly. And we um, produce in, uh, in 2016 uh, this machine, the USAVE, Universal System for Analysis Vaping. Exactly. Uh, the machine can reproduce exactly uh, the vaping practices and we create a cryogenic trap for extracting perfectly the emission and after we can um, we can uh, analyze the condensates of this uh, trapping and we can analyze the liquid before and after vaporization and we verify if there is byproduct emission if uh, the performance of the vaporization is correct every parameter are uh, analyzed here. Uh, this is a really interesting fact this machine right here can actually capture passive vaping like second hand vaping as we hear in, in America so they actually had this machine at the VOP Expo Paris we were just this past weekend and the analysts here will take all the data and tell us exactly you know what we get in secondhand vapor so really really interesting to see that for us it's very important to prove when we produce a chemical analysis to put like a layer the physical parameter. If you burn the chicken when you're cooking, the chicken is not good and the, you, you don't eat the chicken. Um, in, in, uh, actually, in a vaping analysis, uh, sometimes uh, scientists don't produce the physical parameter uh, in front of the, the chemical analysis. That's a problem. It's the reason that we create all of this system, all of this machine, we produce this machine for that, is to be really correct and to put vaping in real practice. Now we're in the second part of the laboratory here and uh, you know you've probably seen a lot of the videos uh, me and Phil have done and you might recognize some of these machines. <laughs> uh, of course what is this department? Uh, it's uh, our chemical uh, laboratory. We have some HPLC, UPLC, chromatography and these equipments are uh, be able to um, make analysis, spatial analysis. Uh, in, in, in this place we have analysis for byproduct generation like uh, for maldehyde, acetaldehyde, etc. Acrylene, uh, some of the stuff we've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, here we we um, analyze the um, spectrum of the flavors, the spec of the flavor. Uh, it's for verify if the flavor we selected are correct for inhalation. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this uh, machine, uh, it's uh, the production of VDLV. And this machine are working and running every time, uh, 24 hours by day, because we analyze in VDLV more than 2,000 analysis per month. Um, it's for verifying our production every time. 
You know what I find interesting, Phil, is you know when we when we first uh, uh, met Charlie, we you know started taking a tour yesterday. You know we saw the big PGVG you know containers, and uh, the first thing that Charlie said is that. Hey, you know, before the truck comes in and starts loading this, we take a little sample right. and it comes up here in this space right here. They check, make sure that the specs that the company has required from the supplier of PGVG meet the specs uh, that, that are being delivered before it's entered into the yet. So all that's checked first. The same thing with the aromas, right? Flavor, flavor molecules. They have their own standards. They want some molecules. They don't want some molecules and flavors. When the flavors come inside here, they put them in the machines. They test them to make sure that they're up to standards for the company to produce the liquid. And that just goes across everything you do, right? I mean, this is one way of you to do quality control, exactly. not only on your suppliers, but on your company as well, too. Yes, and we're certified by the AFNOR. It's the French agency for standards. And um, we can prove that uh, what we say we can verify and we do the maximum for the safety of vapor. You know, how many times have we said, you know, you look at a label of a bottle of e-liquid, e it says something on there, but can they actually tell you what's inside that liquid? Well, I guarantee you, they can tell you what's in that bottle of liquid you're gonna buy from here. Now, third department here, Charlie, what are we doing here? Here we are in the biologic um, laboratory. For us, it's a, um, a, a really important uh, strategy because we have to verify the impact of the vaping behaviors on cells, on human cells, and we create for that a special incubator uh, for analysis uh, this impact. And we connect, we plug a vaping machine, um, the USAVE machine, and uh, we can prove uh, the, um, the, generation of, uh, the generation of emission perfectly. And we put uh, inside the, the liquid, the standard liquid, for example, and we verify the impact on cells with the working on the microscope um, and um, the life of the cells with this generation emission. Yesterday, uh, Charlie was showing me this is uh, one of the uh, 3D models that they have printed here. They can layer the cells actually into this mold and then they can pump the vapor through these cells and they can do it later. It can be just one or they can actually replicate part of the, your lungs. So some of the cell tissues that, that build up to make one of the walls in your lung as well too. And what you're seeing right there on that screen is where they're analyzing those cells after the vapor comes in, which is very, very important. Again, going back to what we said earlier, a lot of the scientists and the science that we're seeing, especially coming out of America, don't do this, right? We can't get actual results unless we use actual use of the product. Which brings us to this triangle that you talk about, this triangle all the time. So explain to us what this triangle is. Our this tri triangle is um, the, the perfect equation for vaping because there is behaviors, there is the liquids and the devices. And every time this triangle is uh, like a link, if you modify one parameter, the impact is not the same on the cell, for example, or on the device. And we have to explain to, 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 to public and explain to institution that if if we perfectly um, control all of these parameters, the conclusion uh, can be correct, can be real. And we want to produce real vaping air for real conclusion. So if you think about it like uh, just in that triangle sense, we start with the physical parameters inside there. We'll make sure that we're accurate as far as you know the wattage and the pressure and how the, the, the draw of the vapor is all starts in that room, then all that emissions and the liquid is verified in the other room to make sure everything is correct. And from there, we take that liquid and that vapor and we apply it to cells and see that to complete that complete triangle. It, it's extremely important to note, right? That usually in this triangle, in most studies, we're missing the one. Yes. The behavior, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's very, 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 we can take liquid off the market and test it. We can actually take emissions and test it. But does that really represent how we don't drink liquid? We right. vaporize liquid into our lungs, right? So that, that third part is extremely important. And that's what we're seeing that they're re replicating here. Yes, and um, for us, it's important to prove our method because the time actually is to make place. Uh, we have to make place to the university. Uh, searcher um, because we don't want to prove um, uh, to, you. Uh, to, to, to me but to scientists Correct. and this is a perfect tools perfect uh, place for university research so tell me ask you a question we have great business big business many bottles nicotine to you as a person how important is that you have full confidence in the product that you produce for people to inhale in their lungs. Um, yes, vaping is um, 
uh, a green practices uh, is better than smoker everybody knows but we have to prove how many percent is better uh, than pure air uh, of course uh, the impact of the selection of the uh, molecule is very important we are very responsible because we don't eat we inhale uh, in a few minutes if there is a problem it can be a problem for 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 everybody and and we've we've seen in usa uh, the impact of this uh, accident um, if standards are uh, correctly programmed if the practices the professional practices are okay uh, vaping is um, the future and the clean future I challenge I challenge all the companies across the world especially here in France to join into this project I think that's the only way that we can change the perception of vaping and show to those that want to eliminate vaping is that vaping is much much less harmful than smoking and the only way to do that is with science. Science. Science and scientists. This lab uh, consists of uh, 15 people staff, but here we have... Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Sebastian. I am a researcher in Angers uh, Science six, since uh, six years now, and I just ended a PhD. So, t tell us a little bit about the work that you, that you have been tasked to do here uh, from the owners. Yeah, uh, the aim was to 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 provide some uh, physical sense into vaping product because most of research miss some uh, physical um, understanding. And uh, the aim of my, my PhD was to provide this, this uh, knowledge, which is really missing in most of the research we so are currently done. Part of doing your PhD was to show that, hey, look, we have all these studies out there on vaping, but really they haven't taken the physical parameter exactly. into consideration exactly. before they publish a study. Yep. And that was part of what you were trying to prove, and you actually proved it into your, into your PhD. Yeah, exactly. How do we... How do we take this to the next level, right? We saw that some of these, these, these studies that are out there are, I would say, not complete, not to offend any scientist, of course. Um, now, most of the job I've done is, is published into my, my reports. And now the aim is to publish many papers which uh, provide the results and the conclusion into the, uh, physic and the scientific uh, um, journal. And uh, doing so, we will begin to improve and to introduce physical sense into the vaping research. And once it will be done, the next step will be to, to, to highlight that uh, the physical uh, phenomena and the physical sense I am trying to explain leads to chemical conclusions and to bio biological conclusions. It's like a story. Once you activate the battery, the main the main phenomena is you vaporize the liquid. So it's begin by here, and then we, we will we will move to chemical conclusion to biological conclusion. It's it's like I think ultimately the goal and to translate a little bit into um, you know something more easy to understand. Yeah. I think if we it, by publishing studies using all of the criteria and the physical parameters that they that they create here in the laboratory. I think not only does it help the industry, but it also helps other scientists as well too. To give them a protocol, give them a threshold of where they can start their studies as well too, which is extremely needed now. Yep. So by publishing these studies, not only are you helping for you know, your own research, you're actually helping other scientists as well too, because really we don't really have yep. anything like that out there right now. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, and then the aim is, is to, to, to improve the protocol and to, to introduce some physical sense in, into standardization also because currently there is some there is some protocol which are mainly coming from tobacco companies which are very simple and adapted from what is currently done into smoking research but uh, uh, a cigarette is not like vaping the physical uh, phenomena is not the same so the protocol could not be the same and there is some new uh, new 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 protocols that should be yeah. created because based they, on the variables of the yeah, different styles exactly, of vaping exactly, the different liquids exactly. mouth to lung direct lung there's just so many variables so let me ask you 
What do you think is the number one error? I mean, I'm sure you've gone through all the studies. Yeah. You've yeah, seen everything yeah. that is out there, and especially for us in America. I mean, I mean, we're just getting killed daily on America. What is the number one error, mistake that you have seen? Or maybe, I shouldn't say error, because again, scientists, they take it very personal when you say that they made a mistake. <laughs> but maybe what misunderstanding we've seen in the previous uh, the so, study. So ma in my sense, the main one is uh, direct line versus, uh, versus, versus time, line. mouse line. It's yeah. the key, because when you use direct line into the device which is made for direct line, suborn device, uh, the airflow is, is here to cool the system. And because the system is mainly something which allow you to generate more vapor, uh, you will have to uh, have a system which cool, which, which cool yes. the system sufficiently to maintain the device into good condition. So if you use a mouse to learn regime it on a device intended for a suborn device, it's like if you want to to light off a fire into a wood yeah. just by. A, just blowing it like blowing. this, yes, exactly. I it, it does not make any sense. So they're using the wrong machine to capture direct yeah. lung vaping, for example, yeah. but the coil gets too hot. So whatever emissions you're gonna get are not gonna be accurate, pretty much. Yeah. And also, machines that can capture the volume. You know, I think one of the scientists told me usually when you mouth to lung, you capture about 75 ml of vapor in your lung, but when you direct lung, you capture 400 ml of vapor into your lung. So you actually have to develop the machines to be able to capture that yeah. quantity of vapor as well also, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, a, it's also a problem which comes from tobacco companies because most of the machines which are currently used in labs come from... Cigarettes. Cigarettes, yeah. exactly. And, and, and so the protocol and the design of the machine is mainly done for a mouse to learn yeah. regime. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a main error because uh, if you say that uh, it's not my problem because the machine is currently done for like this yes. and I can't update my machine you will automatically provide some bad results. I saw one study about uh, two months ago that was done they, they used a sub ohm tank and they put 50 milligram salt nicotine inside it's a, it is scientists it, Real use, this does not happen. People do not use yeah. high nicotine salt with, with sub ohm tanks at 80 watts. You cannot even vape it. Yeah. Physically, you cannot vape it. But a study was done like that. Yeah. It's just mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, the problem with direct lung is mouth, and, mouth, and mouth to lung is, is uh, with a, a bigger problem, which is uh, the consistency of the laboratory experiment, which are not. Co uh, consistent with real use, yeah, and and because you miss this, you miss a lot of information. Because, for example, if you have uh, an experiment in which the cotton is burning, m vaping machine can't can't smell, can't they, they can't they can't feel. sense that, yeah. yeah, and you will continue, and, and and at the end you will have an experiment with, which will not be consistent with. Uh, real life real -time use. because user feel burning taste and yeah. they stop automatically to vapes yeah. and they change the the device and 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 the the, the vape with a new 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 product yeah so tell me specifically now here what are you working on right now uh on the main the main focus of your research right now um the main focus is uh the consequence of the physical problem of boiling into a device. Yeah. Uh, the consequences in terms of uh, chemical degradation, okay. which shows the key because uh, if, if you have uh, uh, an idea of what is product in terms of byproduct, and uh, if you have the limit, you could say the risk. You you could act, assess a risk a risk a risk assessments which is coherent with uh, real use because now you will see in main main publications that people use some um, some chemical uh, con chemical analysis to 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 realize their risk to realize their risk assessments for example. People could do a, a, a risk assessment with a low production of byproducts and also with high production of byproducts. So the, the conclusion will not be the same because the risk will not be the same. My aim is to say that between these two points there is a physical limit yeah. which is fillable by the user and once you pass this limit the risk is, uh, oh, oh, 
is of course increased increased because you are in a very thin condition right. so, so so again to, to explain a little bit more yeah. there's different le levels of vaping you know whether it's MTL direct lung vaping RDL vaping however by doing testing you find what that ideal range is yeah. so the consumer can be educated yeah. and say between this range and this range we feel like this is the best possible scenario for that type of vaping. But once you cross that threshold, some of the properties, some of the byproducts, you know, some of the formaldehyde yep. per perhaps might increase, and this is the level that it's gonna increase, yep. and, and consumers should be aware of yep. that. Yeah, yeah. The key is really to define the power range because the, there is an optimal power range between which the risk for the consumer is significantly lower than- Minimal, yeah. yeah. And once you have the, this power range, the risk assessment is, could be coherent, could be consistent with uh, real use. There's one question that we always ask uh, scientists every time, every time we talk to them. So, in everything that you have seen in your work, you've been working, you know, six, seven years in the vaping industry. Every all the research that you have done yourself, all the other research that you have, is there any reason a smoker today that they should not switch to vaping if they have tried everything no. else and have failed. No, 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 no. The risk is significantly lower, and many is there is no no question. There is no 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 problem. The problem could be if you ask to someone which is not smoker to vape. Yes. Does make it does, make, does not make any sense. But for a smoker, it. it I would say that it, it does not make sense to stay a smoker once you have the solution of vaping product. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. You're and uh, we're, we're very excited to see uh, the future work that's going to come out of this laboratory, not only you know, for, for the products and what you're producing here, but for you know, the improvement of the entire industry, that yeah. we desperately need that. Yeah. I think the, the, the chance for vaping industry is that we 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 want to to improve the the quality, and we are we are aware of like being product. And the conclusion we wanted to highlight is that the risk and the use of vaping product is a, is a solution for the tobacco problem, the smoking problem. So if you accept that this is this is a solution, our role is to define the limit and the healthier way to, to use vaping product. All right, look at that. More lab coats over here, more scientists, more research work. Introduce yourself. So I'm Jeremy. Uh, I'm an analytical, analytical engineer here in NG Science and uh, I'm working on uh, yeah, analyze uh, vaping products and uh, the, their emissions too. Isn't that the most important part, right? The emissions of a vapor yeah, product, course, isn't it? Because that's what we inhale into our exactly. lungs. So talk a little bit about the work that you're doing here. Uh, so uh, the aim of our work uh, is to uh, yeah, um, analyze the chemical composition of the emissions and uh, uh, also the, the impact on uh, human health, and uh, both on uh, short term and long term. Yeah, so tell us a little bit what you have found so far. What are so, some, of, some of the conclusions uh, that you have come out? So, the, the, the first conclusion is that uh, vaping uh, is uh, safer than uh, smoking tobacco cigarettes, of course, but also that there is some yeah, practi practice mm -hmm. uh, that uh, should be um, uh, not regulated, but uh, firstly looked, yeah. and uh, secondly, yes, uh, we need to uh, uh, reflect, reflect yes. about it. And uh, yeah, to um, to educate both uh, professionals and uh, consumers. Yeah, I think that 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 uh, that you know the consumer. In, you know, wh when I look at a bottle of uh, wine or I look at a bottle of water and yeah. it's sealed, you know, yeah. it has the label on. I never think to myself, you know, where they make this. I assume, as a consumer, the bottle of water is safe. I assume the bottle of wine, it's all made you know, with some standardized practice. Yeah. But that's not the case in liquid, right? Because we don't have a really standardized practice yet, especially across you know, a global level. On VIP products today, there is no obligations uh, to the manufacturers to test their products. Correct. So uh, in there, we uh, offer solutions to, uh, the, yeah, to the manufacturers yeah. to analyze their products and uh, optimize the chemical composition in order to uh, uh, make it uh, 
in a good way. When we're talking about a composition of a liquid, we're looking at a lot of chemicals, yes. right? And part of your job is to see, you know, what molecules we need to yes. remove, what flavorings may be we need to remove, correct? So talk a little bit about that process of how you guys determine in the composition of a final product that the consumer gets. Yeah. So to do that, we, we start from the, the raw material, the raw material, sorry. The raw material, yeah. yes. Uh, and uh, the flavors, so flavors. And we, uh, yeah, we look uh, like uh, an ID of the, the raw materials. Uh -huh. So uh, a flavor can be composed by around 10 or 20 compounds uh, to uh, more than 100. So it's a, a big, big job to uh, firstly identify the chemical composition, then research on toxicological aspects compa uh, compound, compound by, by compound. compound. Mm -hmm. And after that, we have uh, a benefic a risk uh, balance yes. that we have applied on, uh, on, uh, on our uh, raw material uh, to, uh, um, to choose which one will be used in uh, the final product. Correct. We always say it's not the, it's not the poison, but it's the dose, right? There's some acceptable yes, level exactly. on everything. And I found that really interesting. We were having again, you know, the diacetyl, the big D word again yesterday uh, discussion. You would think, uh, you know, we wouldn't have to talk about it today, but that is one of the components that you look for in the allowable level based on the amount that's being used in the liquid. On diacetyl, uh, you know that it's okay uh, with uh, ingestion, ingestion, and uh, it's not okay with inhalation. With inhalation, This yeah. coming from a, a, um, a, sorry, occupational work. Uh, occupational work, yes, in yes, the US. yes. And so, yeah, uh, in France, we, uh, in the French standard on the liquid production, uh, there is a limit uh, coming from uh, the US work. Correct. And uh, yeah, so uh, one of our mission here in the lab, in the lab, it's is to. Um, uh, sorry, uh, measure the DHT level in the raw material, and so we can uh, um, we can create a maximal concentration of our raw material in the final product to correct. respect uh, not to this, not this to supersede exactly. that allowable limit. Exactly. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. Correct. It was really interesting when we were talking yesterday how you are literally going through all the flavorings that you're using here for the production of your e-liquid to identify all the compounds inside. This is a huge task that you're undertaking, right? Talk a little bit about that progress of you checking all these flavors. Uh, based on the, the chemical diversity that we are... Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, based, okay. based on the chemical diversity of uh, uh, flavors, uh, we need to uh, advance step by step. So the first years, we look. We were looking for the main compounds, you know, main as uh, the more concentrated compounds and also the more uh, frequently used com components. So, uh, and year by year, we extend our knowledge and our works on uh, the yeah the majority of uh, the compounds, uh, the, the flavor components that uh, is used in the, yeah. in the vacuum and, and, and these flavors are used by a lot of manufacturers, yeah. right? They've been around commercially around yeah. for a very long time, but it's very important to kind of like distinct the flavorings that are actually used for inhalation yeah. or for vaping okay. than other, other flavorings that are yeah, used for... The, the aim, uh, the, the, the final aim of our work is to create uh, we, we called it here. We called it uh, vapology grade flavor. Vapology yeah? grade. Yes, you know, we um, understand that. Yeah. Um, products dedicated to our uh, industry. Industry. Yeah. Exactly. So this is the final aim, and so uh, we need to work with uh, yeah, uh, flavors manufacturers. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ulsa agency, governmental and Ulsa agency. You know, yeah. to uh, help us. They need to help us to do this work because it's uh, needed uh, for the vape vaping and uh, yeah so uh, I'm, uh, I'm really uh, happy to do my job yeah and I bet you uh, are this yeah. product to, uh, to, to develop we're very happy to see the results for you personally yeah you know the work that you take uh, I mean obviously you take your work uh, very very serious and we ask this to everybody you know all the work that you have seen all the analysis that you have done is there any reason anybody that smokes today in 2021 is there any reason if they have tried patch and the gum and they can't quit smoking, yeah. is there any reason they should not try vaping? 
for me, no. There is no risk. Uh, no, no. Simple. There is no reason. Simple like that. No, no reason. reason at all. Why are you still smoking? It's 2021. <laughs> That's good. All right. Well, thank you so much for your work. Thank you for thank your you hospitality for here. And we look forward to me and Phil, and of course, all the industry looks forward to your continued yeah. research and results as we uh, are so much interested in, in having vaping around for smokers. Thank you very much. Yes, vaping is um, a, a green practice. Uh, it's better than smoker, everybody knows. The, the, the first conclusion is that uh, vaping uh, is uh, safer than uh, smoking tobacco cigarettes, of course. I, I would say that it, it does not make sense to stay a smoker once you have the solution of vaping products.